All right, a 2023 Camaro ZL1 1LE. Everybody knows my philosophy when you get a car that you haven't owned, a new used car, assume that every single fluid and filter was done incorrectly. I've already done the diff. It's easy to do. I've got other videos on that. I've changed the oil to 15W50, which is the track spec. I bled the brakes. I've retorqued the wheels. I used a uh, Motul RBF 660 in it. Did a good flush. And now it's time for the transmission. I'd like to tell you the transmission is easy to do. It's a bolt face lie. So here's the pan. I've already loosened these 10 millimeter bolts, which are torqued to 80 inch pounds. Yes, that's 80 inch pounds. I've dropped down the bolts a certain distance and I already got some leakage, uh, which is a fair amount. That was last night. Now the goal now is to take my vacuum pump and slip it in between the transmission and the pan and suck out as much fluid as I can. The goal is to measure the fluid. Everybody reports that it takes about 8.1 quarts if you do a filter and fluid, drain and fill. I wanna make sure that we're close to 8.1 quarts. We'll find out. Uh, the other way to fill it, oh man, if I can actually put it out, there's a little hex. It's an eight millimeter hex right there. I should probably get a better light so you can actually see it. Hopefully you can see it up there. It's right there. Now that's tough to get to because there's no space. So I've got some Allen wrenches, eight millimeter coming that I think I can get in there. If not, I'll grind down one of my handheld ones. I think the torque spec on that is about 15 foot pounds. You don't have to over tighten it. Uh, that would be a bad thing. So I have two plans. I can fill it here once I get the hex, the Allen wrenches, or this is the stand pipe drain plug. Now, it is torqued to 80 inch pounds. 80 inch pounds for the pan, 80 inch pounds for this. And what happens with this is that when you're ready to fill the car, now realize when you fill the car with fluid, it's gonna have to be running at idle. The temperature I will be uh, showing you in a second. I'll tighten this all the way because the pan's gonna be coming down soon. I don't want it leaking in other areas unexpectedly. So let me go over to the data sheet. I always like to do a data sheet before I do a car because I don't want to have to fake it until I make it. So this is the temperature that the transmission is supposed to be, 75 to 80 degrees centigrade or 167 to 176 degrees Fahrenheit. I had the wrong number previously. It's supposed to take 8.1 uh, liters of, or quarts, of this fancy fluid and I've got nine you can Amsoil makes an equivalent of that which gets great reviews I haven't tried it now this is the transmission pan tightening sequence for Silverado which uses uh, this transmission which is the uh, 10 L90. That's a new tranny. I think it's been out for a few years. It gets good reviews. Details 500 to 800 RPM. And the transmission fluid temp as measured by a scanner, an OBD2 scanner. That's it. Put it on a lift. Yeah, whatever if you have a lift. Monitor the transmission fluid temperature, which we've discussed. Now, what I've done prior to this video is I measured the level of the transmission pan. And I discovered that it needs to be, it's not perfectly level. So I'll be raising the front of the car up a little bit. And in fact, I'll be raising even the rear wheels because you have to uh, torque brake 
this vehicle. And what that means is you put your foot on the gas pedal. Uh, you put your, you hit the brake real hard because it's in drive. Then you get it up to 1500 RPM for about 10 seconds, no more than that. And then you let the hot fluid from the torque converter from the brake torque circulate through the transmission, influence the scanner to get it into that range. Now the freaky part, and which is why you should have a professional do this, is if this tire hits the ground, you let your foot off the brake, you're gonna drive this car right off the lift. I don't care if you have uh, wheel chocks like I do, 650 horsepower, 1500 RPM, this thing's gonna drive right off the lift. It's just gonna do it. So I'm gonna raise not only the front so that I can get the pan level, but I'm gonna raise the rear so that the tires are not contacting the surface. So if for some reason I screw up, which is inevitable, I won't be driving this vehicle off the lift. It is not a two post lift, it is a four post lift. And like I keep saying, you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Have a professional do it. Now, one of the tools used by General Motors at their shops, I have been told, is this little adapter. Sorry for the screwball video. This little adapter is hooked up to a flush machine. The reason I have it is I want to have options in filling the tranny. And this goes here and then you put your fluid into the transmission using this adapter. I've got a hand pump from O'Reilly's, which is an auto parts store, which will allow me to do that. I also have purchased an additional filter, General Motors filter for this car, uh, because I plan on replacing the filter. I'm there, I might as well do it. And I also purchased a new gasket. Now the gasket is reusable. I wonder who Ryan Dennis is, eh, I don't know. And let me put it correctly so you can at least read the number. So I get my stuff from a GM dealership because I'm not about to fake it until I make it. Yeah, I could probably save 10 bucks here and 15 bucks here, but why would I risk getting the wrong part to save $15 on a car that is ne never gonna be made again. 2024 is the last year, you can't get them. It's a powerhouse. It is essentially a track car because it has some very unique shock absorbers in the front called DSSV. Uh, it's, a, it's a beast. So I will be All back. Right, what did I end up doing? I left this 10 millimeter in if you can see it, I can barely see it. And then I slowly removed the second remaining 10 millimeter out of here and slowly dropped the pan down, which started to leak, understandably there. Then I took my suction device and sucked out all the fluid in the pan. So, so far, what do I have? Oh Lordy, we got a liter or two here and we've got, how much here? Three or four quarts. Let's see, that's three liters. So we've got three liters, probably five so far. And we'll see what happens. I did drop a little on the ground, but hey, that's to be expected. So that's where we're at. I'll be back. All right, we have the transmission oil pan filter. Uh, it's got two bolts here, which I believe we'll see in the car, are 11 millimeter st stars. And we have the most important part here, which is this little flexible rubber gasket. You wanna make sure you get that out of the car before you insert the new one. Now, bring it over here, and we see the star there, and we see the star there, and we just loosen them up. I'm not gonna show you me removing the filter because, of course, 
I only have two hands. So I will be back. Well, as you can see, I got the old filter off. I successfully got the little seal here, which is good. Like I said, you don't want to leave that behind. Uh, when I look at the filter, I think that's just transmission fluid. I see no evidence of heat. The plastic isn't melted. The fluid isn't dirty. So it all looks good. Then we'll come over. Well, we must have come over to the tranny. So I've installed the new filter. I've got the new seal up here, which I haven't torqued these down yet because I'm not sure what the torque spec is on these, but I will find out. I've wiped the edge, the perimeter of the mating surface. I see no dirt. When I look around, I don't see anything that says I've been melted, I've gotten too hot. I'm just gonna let this fluid drip for a while and go from there. Now, I'm gonna turn this light off since I'm gonna be gone for a while. Yes. And then we come over here to the pan, which is, to my eyes, perfectly clean. Now, this gasket came off easily. It's reusable. It's got a little marker here, a little nub. She can't put it in the wrong way. I love it when they make it idiot proof. And then looking at the magnets, there isn't much clutch material there. I will clean the magnets. There's nothing in the pan. Life is good, making progress. Now, did I need to change the transmission fluid? Well, you know my philosophy with the used car, change everything. Unless you know for a fact it's been done. If someone said, hey, I'm a qualified GM mechanic, I work on ZL1s, I work on the 10L90 transmission, and I do it all the time, then you can comfortably with a receipt say, I don't need to do it. But I felt the need to do it because, like I keep saying, they don't make this car anymore. And this transmission, I looked it up, this transmission is worth almost $7,000. Now that doesn't include the labor, of course, to install it, which I'd assume be, let's say another thousand. It depends on where you are. If you're in Northern Illinois, it's $300 an hour for shop time. And if you're in Southeastern Wisconsin, it's probably 180, 200. But why go to all that trouble to have this, all this removed and reinstalled because you were too lazy or too cheap to get the fluid done. And like I said, if you can't do it, have a shop you trust do it, who understands the process. I'll All right, how did I fill the pan? This is the tool I used. The dealer tool doesn't fit anything that I know of, but I got this nice uh, pump from O'Reilly's. I've seen them before. It fit on real nice, real tight here. And then I put the other end into the fluid. I did, uh, so you can see it ain't cheap. Nothing is, it's a car. Now the next step, I've got it all full of fluid. Let me try to show you what I did next. Let's see, where is it? So I had to level the car because you can't, this is the port where I put the fluid using that little adapter I just showed you. And then you wanna make sure that the pan, tranny pan, is level, and it's level. Don't do this when the car is not level. Now I tightened, tightened all these bolts to 80 inch pounds, and I did the pattern which has been previously shown on the diagram, and I'll show you that pattern again. Therein lies the pattern. Now it is for a 10L80, but don't worry, the pan is the same whether it's a 10L80 or is in this car a 10L90. Next step, fire the thing up, get the temperature up to 
75 to 80 degrees centigrade. Once it's warm or hot, I will open up this stand pipe valve. I will use a 10 millimeter socket. I will wear gloves. I will wear glasses. I will wear all sorts of protective gear. Like I said before, only a moron likes me, like me does this. Car is level, I'm gonna heat it up. I put about nine liters of fluid in it. It's supposed to take 8.1 with a filter and drain. We'll see. Got a pan ready to go to capture any of the excess fluid. It'll probably be noisy when I'm here next. I'll be back. All right, the car is on. I have the scan tool on. Remember, I want to be 75 to 80 degrees. I'm at 26 degrees. I think the air temp is 25. So it may take a while. And uh, you can see that the car comes with a transmission temperature gauge. So I just did a brake torque. Went up to 1500 RPM for less than 10 seconds. We'll see what the transmission fluid temperature does. Can't see that it did anything. Oh wait, it has to be in drive. Yeah, it's not gonna do any good. So I'm in drive. into park seems like a better idea boy it makes some noise when you do that this may take a while I'll be back well we're now at 75 degrees you put the camera down for a second get the headlamp on Raise it up just a little bit more. Get it level. And this is gonna be a wild one. Hot transmission fluid. Oh gosh. This could either go well or this could go ugly. I'm gonna put the phone down, turn it All on. All right, everybody. Trans temp is 77 degrees, which is between obviously 75 and 80. I drained it to it got to just a little tiny occasional drip. Looks like the transmission is done. The only thing I have to do is do a test drive, which won't be a big deal. 75 and 80 degrees centigrade. Uh, I did some brake torquing little unsettling, but wheels are off the ground in the back. The car is level. Life is good. It's about 24 degrees centigrade outside. Very nice day today. It was gorgeous. Oh my God. The sun was out. Low humidity. But don't tell anybody. Everybody thinks the Midwest is this really hot, humid, nasty place. It is cold and you know what. Uh, put up this uh, Clematis frame that clematis didn't make it made it made it i'll just buy a couple more at a place called shady acres so i love you all the world is a wonderful place peace out